let's get this place ready to do some packing. I feel like I'm the kind of person, it's not that I feel like it, I know it. Whenever I clean or I pack, the entire place must, must be a complete disaster. So when I'm gone, it actually looks like I'm gone. Wow. Oh, it looks like I'm in heaven. I'm not. Packing for cruise ships is a little bit different because you need to combine seasons, you need to combine leisure wear with practical wear with your uniform and with more elegant attires. I've done some packing mistakes in the past and not just packing, the fact that I've overpacked but on top of that I also purchased so much stuff. My god, so much money. So now I'm going to do my very best and stick to the essentials. Starting with the cats. Besides the... <sighs> My cat's littering in the background. Are you finished? Take your time. Besides what you actually and physically pack, you need to be very prepared and anticipate what you're not going to have there and what you should download up front. That includes everything from music, films, series, podcasts, meditations, which is usually bigger files. So one of my main problems was overpacking and purchasing items further and further. This time I'm going to try to pack a bit smarter. For me, the main categories are clothing, skincare and gear. I have a lot of gear that I need to take on board. This calls for reinforcement. Actually, it doesn't. Don't drink and pack. Okay, first thing first, suitcases. The travel allowance for suitcases is two suitcases up to 20 kilograms each. I'm gonna designate the this black one for all of my gear. I've washed like six loads worth of laundry, so packing won't actually be finalized today, but I'm gonna try to narrow it down so I can clear the apartment. This is some sort of cat heaven. The only piece of gear that I really wanted to pack, but I'm not allowed to, is a drone because traveling all over the world, it'd be very useful to have a drone. However, I do understand the security reasons behind it and I do understand that one person screwed it up for the rest of us. So I'm going to... <gasps> First piece of equipment I'm going to pack. Welcome to the middle of the Atlantic. I am so happy to be here. Who would have guessed my cat's hair would have traveled so far? <laughs> this is the rest of the gear I didn't get to film at home. First and most important, we have my Sony a7 III that I'm currently filming on with the 20 millimeters 1.8, a beautiful lens, both for filming as well as for photos. We also have the microphone, the Rode VideoMic Pro Plus, the Sony 90 millimeters 2.8 macro. This is my all time favorite lens, the Canon 50 millimeters 1.2 with the Sony adapter. I bought this one with me on board specifically for a project where 90 millimeters was a bit too close and 20 millimeters was a bit too far. So I bought this one for amazing still for portraits works well on the Sony with the adapter. However, I don't really use it for filming because it doesn't have the auto focus. Also the little Manfrotto stand that I use for my camera. I left my bigger um, Manfrotto tripod at home, but I can take this one anywhere with me. It just works so slick with this setup. My GoPro Hero 7 Black. It's still a great piece of equipment. The accessories I'm taking for the GoPro Pro. First one, this clamp is the actual GoPro clamp and to be honest I think this is one of the best purchases I have ever made because I've clamped this to the front of the ship, to the back of the ship, to a quad bike in the desert, to a safari van on that very bumpy ride and this is actually a very very strong clamp so it held the camera in place perfect, no shake, no nothing. This is my hero. 
Okay, one of the reasons I love taking my GoPro with me is so I can set it up somewhere and leave it for days so I can see how we're cruising in and out of ports, I can see the sunrise and the sunset at sea. Now to be able to do that, the tiny GoPro battery is not going to last that, so I have this power bank. It's from EC Technology. The capacity is 22,400 milliampers, and this is extraordinary. To be honest, when I've ordered it, I thought it's going to be like this tiny thing and I'm very, very grateful it wasn't because I can charge a lot of things with this. I can charge my phone so many times. Like I even charged drone batteries and remotes and obviously I can keep my GoPro on for ages and I just use this bag that I've received with my first DJI Osmo Mobile One. So I just kind of put the battery in and attach it somewhere and the cable attached to the GoPro. My laptop. This was a crazy thing to pack, but if you do video editing on a laptop, you know you can't just place your laptop on a table. So I bought this cooling fan with me. It was a bit difficult to pack because I didn't pack it in a box and I knew the risk of potentially breaking it during my travel, but I was okay with that. But I couldn't risk leaving it at home because it is important for editing my lacy hard drives. I wish I could have just had one on me, but I'm editing so many videos using archive footage that I needed to bring everything with me. So far, this doesn't look like a lot of equipment, but imagine that I'm carrying this in my backpack in every single port I go. Walking hands-free uh, for me is like a fantasy. Moving on to other electronics, I have these Bluetooth earbuds that I bought last minute before I left. Really cheap, really happy with them. I think they're Xiaomi. No, am I or my true wireless earbuds basics too. I don't think anyone ever packs this, but I also had to pack this Compex Fit 5 because it does help me with my knee rehab. Um, I still need to take care of my knee and try to get my muscle back to its optimal level. <laughs> this case was a nightmare to pack because I couldn't risk this breaking. Tons of other cables and adapters. By the way, the photography gear is just for my own personal projects. My work gear is provided by my employer, so all this is optional and additional. Then obviously we had this we have the spare batteries, the cards, charging cables, the extension leads, the travel adapters little Bluetooth JBL speaker, hair straighteners, hair dryers. I also packed some of these international travel adapters. So you've got the British one, you've got the European one. It has like all these different plugs and inputs. And I think these are essential. And a tip for all these electronics would be try to have the cables for the same input or the same country and use an extension cord for those and always pack one of these because if you have all the different plugs, the, the US, the European, the UK, you must pack adapters for all of them. And at this point, every single item you pack can make your life a bit harder. So try and simplify it as much as you can. I also packed my Kindle for some more screen time. I feel like this is a very Romanian abroad thing to do. This is the medication bag. Don't get me wrong, there are medical facilities on board. However, I know myself best and um, it's great to be prepared with the potential medication you know works for you. But to be honest, this is not just medication. These are also some vitamins, vitamins and personal hygiene things. A little bit of everything to keep me going so I don't need to stop in every port and do shopping. At least to have the essentials, even if I do or don't get to use them and besides this I'm quite proud that these three are all my makeup and skincare bags at some point I did go through what I packed for makeup and skincare but I find that irrelevant for this production at the moment so if you do want to know what I packed let me know it's definitely a lot more skincare a lot less makeup and definitely the essentials Okay. Then we have like a little bag situation. This one I took for traveling. 
this one is around the waist kind of bag got really old i had it on the previous contracts as well and i absolutely love it i am the happiest when i only have this on me and no other gear and i stole my mom's vintage leather clutch this is actually for work so i can always put um a few little things in here instead of my pockets and the most important bag is my backpack i bought this last contract in australia from peak designs i cannot remember how many liters this is calculated to uh, fit but i definitely know is the largest one i've filled it like you wouldn't imagine for this trip sorry it might be a bit dirty and what one of the things i do love about it is this uh, hooking system that you can either like Oh my, 30 liters, I found it. It says 30 liters as capacity. Uh, and you can either hook it for a lower level or, or when it gets really full, you can kind of pack the top one and you gain quite a bit of space inside. It's very comfortable and sleek. I'm happy with it so far. I am curious to see the Peter McKinnon design. This one does have Velcro inside and I know he made some changes with his designs so whenever i will change this one not a rush i want to try a peter mckinnon bag we're not gonna go through my clothing really but i don't think you've ever seen uh inside of a travel bag more black than mine you can call me morticia however to prove my point that i didn't do much shopping in the past few years a lot of the things that i packed are kind of the same ones because when i do find a piece of clothing that i'm very comfortable in looks great in um I keep it for many, many years. I pack two pairs of working shoes that are more elegant. Then I packed my port outdoor free time Nikes, um, my training Nikes, the boots that I traveled with. Pretty much all these are <laughs> black shoes. Two pairs of slippers for warmer ports and another pair of kind of non-branded sketchers just to have some non-black shoes. For clothing I packed workout clothes easy to match with the shoes that I have. The rest of the clothing is comfortable and uh, casual perhaps smart casual comfortable to for my free time on board uh, when I spend time with the other crew members or when I'm in port. Warmer clothes as well as beach clothes. Comfortable all of them so I can either be on the beach either run around the sea with the heavy backpack and one of the things maybe no one tells you is to overpack socks underwear and possibly tights if you're a woman and if you need them in your uniform you just might not have just as much time to do laundry as you do when you're at home so these are the things you do want to have um, plenty of this would be a fantastic time for you to subscribe okay okay clothing wise one thing i didn't pack as much are statement pieces i packed two or three elegant outfits for christmas for new year's eve for the elegant nights we do go in guest areas to watch a show or to have dinner the ship is very elegant so you do want to look and feel accordingly but the rest of the clothes are basics and they're easy to mix and match another important aspect to considering when you do pack are sim cards and i've struggled with this a bit on my previous contract i've had a contract with the three mobile phone from england and the coverage was amazing around the world and now for some silly reasons after my contract has ended i used orange in romania but that doesn't really help for anything i just didn't want to sign a contract again so for some reason i've ordered a gift gap sim card but when i landed in the uk the card did not work and when i got to the accommodation and got some wi-fi I managed to read some articles about them having a massive outage, which for me was kind of the end of the story. Maybe I've dodged a bullet and I've quickly ran to the shop and bought another three SIM card because they do have great coverage. At least I can rely on my main ports to have good internet connection. You do have internet on board, but you do want to make sure you have internet in ports without relying on internet cafes or restaurants. You want to be able to move around, have a map, make a phone call and all the basics. I also heard Vodafone has amazing coverage around the world, but as far as I know, there is no SIM card that works 
everywhere in the world without extra charges. So if you do hear of one, please let me know. One of the reasons I didn't finish filming this video at home was because the last two kilograms to get rid of from my bags were a nightmare. Brace yourself for this. The items that were easiest to remove did not weigh too much, so they wouldn't really make a difference to remove them from my bags. And I kept removing and checking the weight of my suitcases over and over and over again. It was very stressful. I think I did that up until the moment I left. And this is what really Really helped me with all this process. This is just like a digital scale. It works in pounds as well as it works uh, with kilograms and it just has a, a little battery in it and you hook the handle of your suitcase here and you just pick it up and it is so helpful. I always pack it with me because when I do finish my contract and I need to go to the airport, I do not want to check my uh, bag in the airport. So this is a little bit of a must have or it's great if someone does have it. <laughs> so as you could see, I've packed my suitcases up to the limit and actually I didn't pack a lot of the things that I wanted to. So what do you do if you want to purchase some things from your travels um, because you might want to buy some souvenirs or clothes or anything you'd like. My advice is to do what I did. I packed quite a few consumables and I know I will not be returning with some of these items back at home because I'm going to use them in the meantime. And um, obviously gear is a big weight in my bags. However, I am happy or flexible to let go of a few pieces of clothing that I did bring with me to make space for some potential new ones or, you know, the easiest solution might be just don't buy anything and everything. Make sure that what you buy you actually need and that it is realistic to carry it with you and make sure it's something worth buying then and there as opposed to when you get home you can just buy it online. I really hope this video helped. Thank you for being here. <laughs>